good morning. Hello and welcome to the Unc Rye show from beautiful South Side, Muncie, Indiana. Hope that you're having a good day today. Uh, I certainly am. I am um, up nice and early and uh, went to bed nice and late, <laughs> but uh, that's okay. Nate's out running around, you know, so what am I going to do, right? So anyways, I hope that you're having a good day today. Um, the uh, certainly um, have a lot of uh, planned for this afternoon it's going to be a very busy day so doing a lot of work happy to say i'm always happy when i'm working on things um so we'll talk about a few of those things today a couple of new things to to try out i have a new recipe for you today uh, some other odds and ends so that's good we have a new item to test out and uh, you might see back behind me right here is an ironing board i don't know how well you can see that uh, we are going to test out an item uh, called a Taylor's clapper or steam clapper. There's different uh, names, I guess, but we're going to try one of those out today. So that should be interesting. Um, and uh, I have a couple of uh, things to, to look at. You can see I got my um, headset in here. I want to uh, have a couple videos. So I thought I would go ahead and put that in so I can make sure I know everything is playing okay. And then I'll probably drop that once we get rolling here. But Anyways, um, set up the outdoor cam. Let's see what's going on outside. Here we go. Ah, yes, okay. So here we are. I went ahead. That is a live view from outside my house. Um, as you can see, my Abervites uh, could use some, uh, some uh, trimming to get them at more uniform height. <laughs> I have some some uh, tall ones and some short ones so um, but that's okay uh, but nothing much going on outside right now thought maybe uh, I'd uh, see somebody driving by or walking by or what have you um, uh, maybe we will in a little bit um, but if I go back to the outside view I will say that um, that uh, it's a fairly sunny day outside today it uh, obviously has been raining for days on end leading up to this and there is more rain in the forecast so we'll have a look at that but um, for now for today the sun is out for those of you who like sun uh, I uh, can deal because it is not um, uh, it's not hot out so I, I can deal let's have a look at the weather here and then let me refresh my page here so I can see what we have going on in the weather uh, let's see there we go. Today's weather uh, brought to you by Weather Underground. <laughs> so um, let me move this over here. So 10 day forecast. It's not really a 10 day. Oh, there it is. I'm sorry. I'm losing my mind. OK, so it is a 10 day forecast after all. Um, I am just uh, uh, not awake, I guess. OK, so uh, today 62 in sunshine. That's good. I was thinking about doing a front uh, porch jam later, and it looks like the weather is going to be perfect for that. So we will do that later uh, just for fun, just a couple songs, just goofing around. So um, always fun to play a little music, not a living room jam. Just, you know, throw a few up on the porch, raise up the blinds, maybe open up the, uh, the, the windows to kind of air it out a little bit, you know, what have you. So um, do that, maybe do some jamming on the porch. I uh, think that sounds like fun. So we'll try to do that this afternoon, maybe uh, you know, three or four or something like that. So anyways, but, uh, um, uh, but nonetheless, uh, then we turn to 45 Monday, Tuesday 47, uh, 52 on Wednesday, all of those days mostly and partly cloudy, um, 58 on Thursday, and then rain, rain on Saturday, Friday and Saturday. Um, and then uh, Sunday 51, Monday 60. So um, I will be doing some traveling this week starting on Wednesday, and I am excited about that. And um, with that traveling, I'm also pleased to see that the weather's going to be decent. So I'll be traveling to French Lick on Wednesday starting about 11. It's about a three hour drive. Um, I rented a car so that Nate will have the truck and um, I rented a compact car. The last two times I rented a compact car, I got there and had a, um, a, an upgrade, no, no additional charge. Uh, one, one time I upgraded to a Camaro and one time I upgraded to a truck. So fingers crossed, let's hope we get another upgrade. Otherwise I'll be driving a little teeny compact car down there. But I can deal. I mean, I like my big truck, but if I have to, I can take a compact car for one day to drive to a conference. And so, uh, so that'll be fun. 
Um, I'm not uh, presenting at this conference. Uh, a lot of times I do, but uh, I'm not at this one, so that's, uh, uh, I, I'm happy either way. But if I'm not presenting, I don't have to have anything prepared and rehearsed in advance. So uh, that's fine. Um, I'm always happy to do that. So good either way, right? So, all righty. So next thing up here that I want to talk to you about today, uh, we want to look at, I had, uh, so I had a, a friend of mine who was talking about um, Diablo 4 and wanted me to check this out. And I'm like, games are so far beyond me that uh, that I don't think I could ever, you know, play a game like that. But I said, but you know what? I wanted to check it out so I know what I'm talking about. Um, and so uh, I did. And here's what I found. And this is why I say games have certainly gone clear past my level, my ability to understand the games. Um, but I wanted to share with you. Uh, and uh, we'll do, uh, this is the, uh, the, the game uh, action or the live gameplay trailer okay so this is a game and this is why I say that uh, they've went so far beyond what I can understand that I don't know how I would ever play this but let's have a look we'll do a bit of a reaction video here okay okay now that's game footage mind you that's pretty amazing okay the dream continues to haunt me old friend hmm okay it always starts with a journey to a distant It's crazy land. that those graphics are that good, right? There I find a city in flames. Streets choked with corpses. So. Unthinkable destruction. I witness These games are like movies. Slaughter. I mean, I know that I'm brother talking about something that's brother. super obvious to everybody else, Pure but hatred. to me, that's just amazing that these games are of this quality. Executions. Agony. Suffering surrounded me until my turn comes. They burn my eyes, break my bones. I awaken in terror. There's no one left to stand against them. So I think I think with people like me, the video games have gotten so complicated that, that they are beyond my ability to catch up. Maybe I could, I don't know, but. I will say the graphics are uh, amazing and intense. I think the games are more like uh, you move from uh, playing a game to controlling a movie on this, right? So. So, how about that? That's a video game, right? So, so uh, um, somebody told me to check that out, and um, uh, to be honest with you, I did download it. I wanted, I wanted to actually give it a, a try just so I could learn about it. And actually, we said my, my the GPU on my laptop was not powerful enough to play it. So, anyways, maybe I could try it on my desktop later. I don't know, but I did watch the trailer, did check it out. So there you go. Um, that is big news in the gaming world right now. Um, there is a beta that is available for I think till the end of today, till today at midnight or something, where you can download that for free and play. So, anyways, um, I wanted to check that out and uh, and do my due diligence on checking out a game that somebody told me about. Uh, it looks fascinating. It looks amazing that you are controlling it like it's a movie. 
the graphics are insane on and on and on I do think there's a lot of time invested in that however <laughs> so let me show you what kind of game that I can play that is much more my skill level here um, let me switch to my screen here there we go pac-man I can play this game so let's see what we got here we go whoops uh oh not getting any audio for some reason but uh, let's try refreshing that I like the audio on pac-man hold on let's see if we can get our audio going here <gasps> nope. there we go now this is this is more my speed right here okay here we go this video game is at freepacman.org and you can play pac-man all day long um, and there are several other games on this website that you can also play uh oh I'm in trouble here Oh no! Oh no! Okay, we'll try one more here. There we go. If I could just clear the one board, one, just the one board, I would be happy. Oh! Alright, one more try. One more try. Hold on. Oops, I shouldn't have done that yet, but. Uh oh, I'm in real trouble now. All right, clear the board. <laughs> so enough Pac-Man for now. But I do want to point out to you that on this uh, website here, uh, we also have, uh, and I'm not actually playing right now, um, also have Pac-Man, Frogger, Pong, Asteroids, um, I don't know what that one is, Tet Pack, I, I don't know what that is, Kong, Flappy Bird, Fishy, and more games, so uh, I won't play anymore right now, but um, check this game out, I think this is, uh, or check this website out rather, there's some good stuff on here, so we got, uh, we got Frogger, this was always a fun one, I guess I am playing another game, but... Okay, well, I forgot how to play. Um, <laughs> so, anyways, um, but go check that website out. That's actually a really cool website. There's a lot of really good, uh, good games on there. So, um, so yeah, so do that. Okay, let me make some quick adjustments here, and then I will give you a few more updates. Uh, today is just sort of a mixed bag of odds and ends today. Uh, so. Um, I have um, a few different things to talk about, but um, nothing uh, uh, super specific to, or you know, no, no big, uh, big productions or anything. Although, the the Taylor's Clapper here in a moment, maybe that will be. We'll give that a try. Excuse me, I burp for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> they don't burp when I'm drinking coffee, but yeah, who knows? Okay, let's see if there's anything going on outside. Uh, there is not. I do see a lot of people out and about uh, driving on the on Madison Street over there. So there is a lot of morning activity, but uh, nothing, nothing much going on uh, here at the moment. So at least nobody walking by or anything. So, um, but uh, anyways, all right. So next update is business plan update. Russell Rock LLC. Um, wanted to give you a quick update. As we walk through uh, this, I have a my goal is to continue to walk through this on the show. Um, again, I qualify. I probably don't have to do this every week, but I qualify for people at work that um, if they're watching this video, that this is a side hustle, I'm not trying to start a full time business, just something on the side. Um, I feel like this will be a good uh, project for Nate. I'm going to take my headset out here. <clears throat> there we go. Um, I feel like this will be a good uh, business for Nate to work on so that he can make some money. And um, what we have here on the 
the uh, business plan um, is that uh, we, you draw everything up, okay, so we won't read through it or anything, but I wanted to point out to you that you have your executive summary. Uh, the business plan uh, right now is drafted with the exception of a detailed customer analysis. We'll talk about that in a minute. Anyways, you in the business plan, you outline the product, um, the customers. So we talk about the, looking at auto enthusiasts, small business, event planners, schools and universities, nonprofits. Um, we have a plan for the future of the company, a five-year plan. The five-year plan is to really ramp this up big, uh, even if it's a side hustle. Um, if we go on a five-year plan, maybe Nate can run it full-time. Um, so anyways, we have a five-year plan that continues to build over the years. Now, you may ask, um, how do you know that'll happen? Well, of course you don't, but you have to have a plan, okay? Um, company description, we put our, um, we put, we have a, a mission statement, the principal members, which would be Nate and I, uh, with legal structure spelled out, which we've already talked about before, uh, detailed market research on the industry. So you have to know your, your product, how big that industry is, where it fits in locally, um, and who you're going to sell to. Then we have a detailed description of our customers where we actually break down all the information about the customers. That way we know who we are selling vinyl to, and then when we see somebody who would be a good customer, we will know because we're, we know what we're looking for, right? Um, then we have all of our advantages, um, our personalized service and positive reputation, or at least we will have a positive reputation. Uh, a few details about regulations. We have all of our products here, vinyl decals, lettering, banners, heat transfer vinyl, um, do t-shirts, hoodies, uh, wall decals, vehicle lettering. I think I said that twice, but uh, um, pricing structure. We even break down our pricing. And now this will probably be adjusted as we work through more detailed work on our costs. But for our, our initial business plan, we went with some sort of industry standard pricing. And uh, product life cycle. Okay, that's uh, um, nothing much to tell there. Research and development, how we will learn more about our product right so we talk about going to trade shows and doing our own research certifications things like that and then move into marketing and sales and we have our growth strategy so of how we grow into that five-year plan okay um, and then uh, how we communicate with the customers so we talk about email social media referral programs follow-up calls we have a section on how to sell Okay, so, uh, so it um, talks about our selling strategy. I know I'm not reading this stuff, but I don't want to bore you with the, all the details. I'm going over the highlights. Um, so that is uh, where things are at right now. And the reason that this is important is because uh, over the course of the next uh, few weeks, we have, a, we have a target date to start operations on May 1st. And um, so this is getting everything ready. So I've walked you through some of the stuff. Um, I think I, I've actually, for memory serves, since our last show, I've refined this a little bit because last show I was a little more vague about what exactly we were wanting to establish as a business. We were kind of talking about some different things, but we are going to be working on uh, cut vinyl. Um, and it will be, it's a plotter, which we'll talk about the equipment more soon but it, i have to pick out the exact model i'm getting and then buy it and stuff but anyways you vinyl goes through it kind of like a printer uh, a head on the on the plotter goes back and forth and cuts the vinyl out then you pull the excess out you cover it with a, a mask um, and then you can peel that off and then apply it on things or you can lay it on a shirt and press it um, and so we're going into the cut vinyl business and can do and to make a long story short Vinyl graphics on anything you want. Um, you can put it on, um, you can put vinyl graphics on anything. So, uh, you know, like uh, water bottles or, or giveaway type things that you would do at schools, that sort of stuff. Um, do the, like I said, the t-shirts, we can make vinyl banners. So you buy a banner blank and then you put the vinyl on that. We've got doing that, there's uh, all kinds of stuff. So I will keep you posted as we go, but there's some very exciting things uh, in the works here so we will uh, so we will continue I will continue to keep you updated as we go all right so that's where that's at let's have one more look outside 
I just keep checking outside. I feel like I want to see some kind of activity. I don't know, somebody run through the stop sign or, or I mean, you know, hopefully <laughs> in a safe manner, but people run through that stop sign all the time. So I thought I would see that or somebody walking down the street or something, but I got nothing. So, okay. All right. Well, not very exciting. So, all right. Uh, next up. Hmm. Okay. Um, next up, I want to look at um, what I bought from Amazon recently. So what I bought from Amazon recently, we we're going to put to the test. Let me share my screen again. This thing. Okay. This is a um, hardwood Taylor's clapper for steam iron to set a steam. It says uh, that didn't make any sense. But um, anyways, uh, so we got uh, got that and that. So you you iron, and then you press with this thing, and then it makes a super crisp uh, um, uh, super crisp crease in your shirt. So we're gonna try that in a minute. Okay. Um, so you, there you go. So you steam it, then you press it with this thing for a few seconds, and um, and then uh, it will really make that a super uh, uh, super uh, precise crease. I'm at a bit of a loss of words here, but you get the idea. So let's put this to the test here. To do this, I'm going to have to make a few adjustments here. So bear with me. <clears throat> okay, let's see. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, make sure. Uh, let's see if I can do this without being too disruptive. I banged into my old guitar, by the way. This one is one that I really like playing. I think I'll play this on the front porch jam later. I don't know. Um, I really like playing it. Um, it's one that uh, I bought from the garbage man for real, and uh, th it was kind of torn up, and I fixed it up. Uh, but it was uh, it's a fun guitar, right? Okay, so there's my ironing board, um, and it's a nice sounding guitar. Uh, it's my, it, my the one I usually play does sound better. Okay, so I do want to be clear about that. Um, you can't beat the Washburn, but this. Uh, so maybe I should play the Washburn on the front porch jam just because it's the better guitar. But that guitar is uh, cool, and sometimes it's fun to play something a little uh, different. You know, something that you don't usually play. So just to do things a little differently. Ah, okay, so I got my iron right here. Do I need to move that closer to get a better... <laughs> Why do I feel like this is going to end badly? There we go. Okay. You can probably see that a little better. So uh, this iron is a Black & Decker Pure Steam Professional model. I think it's Black & Decker. I said that and then I'm not sure. No, it's not. <laughs> okay. It's a Pure Steam model. Okay. I, I swore it was Black & Decker, but okay. Maybe not. Anyways. Um, high quality item, high quality iron for you. And going to plug it up here. And see if I can get this here. Plugging in over here on my auxiliary plug-in over here out of sight. Okay. <laughs> this is a little more confined than I thought it was when I started this morning. So I have the iron turned up to nice and hot. Okay. I'm going to set this coffee cup over here. <laughs> I just ripped my microphone off. Okay. That's, that would have normally stretched that far, but I guess not today. Um, but, uh, had it stuck underneath the ironing board. Arning board, as I've heard people say. Okay, just checking there and hope to die. Okay, iron's getting hot. Back here we have a lovely white shirt with no creases in the sleeves. See that? No creases. Okay, we're gonna, we are going to put a nice crease in the sleeve. Now, I, the whole shirt should be iron, but for all settle for putting a crease in the sleeve today, because that's what that's what our goal is. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. Okay. So we'll lay that down nicely there. Okay. A couple of pro tips for you. 
professional grade ironing. Okay, uh, it's not showing up on camera real well. I, I should, probably should have put the overhead camera up today. But all I'm doing is laying the sleeve down flat and I'm going to iron it with the iron. And then I'm going to take this thing and smack it down like that. And then we'll see if it works. So, so you don't really need to see it real well. I mean, I, unfortunately, I know you can't really see that at all. Um, but uh, I didn't. Uh, I didn't expect that you wouldn't be able to see it, so I guess I didn't plan ahead enough. But, <clears throat> anyways, <laughs> we will take that, um, and we got that all laid down nice. We're going to iron a nice crease in that shirt, then we're going to smack it with the the tailor's thing like that on each one, and hold it for a few seconds, and then hold it again for a few seconds, and then we're going to see if this crease is super sharp like it's supposed to be. Okay. Um, oh, another pro tip here. If you put down a handkerchief on your shirt, you will not risk making it shiny or scorching the material in any way. So here we go. Okay, nice and hot. And let me go ahead and this is like our, our sort of our first pass here. Okay, now that's not a bad crease already, but we can do better. We can definitely do better. Okay, so you can see this is a nice hot steam iron. Okay, I'm going to steam that, then I'm going to take this, and I don't know how long to hold it, but for a short while. By the way, on a website I was watching, or on a YouTube video I was watching, somebody said that they, they make these ironing boards that have like that have steam suction built into them, so it will actually suck steam out through the bottom of the ironing board. I was like, man, you got to be into it to do that. But, I mean, I think those are mostly professional grade. Um, now, in the video, they were not talking as if it was professional grade. They were talking as if it was, like, just something you would casually buy at home. But that seems like a bit of a stretch. A bridge too far, as they say. So, I don't think I want to spend that kind of money to iron shirts. But, uh, um, yeah, and I've seen some videos where they smack it like that, too. I'm going to smack my iron right off the ironing board, I bet. Okay, our first test here. Now, I didn't iron the whole sleeve, so they might have some wrinkles still. But, um, what do we got there? Okay. <laughs> and you cannot see it at all. Um, but that is a very, very precise... If you could only see it. See how that is? See that how nice that is? So, yes, that that is... Uh, it's not showing up on camera great. But I will say that that's, that's definitely working. That is a very sharp, very sharp crease. And I have a feeling that different types of material, and that's, that's, uh, uh, that material might not be the best material to test with anyways, but, um, but I would say that that's definitely a win. That seemed like that worked very well. Uh, that is a very sharp crease. So call that a win. So you get these, you use on your pants, whatever. So you take your pants and iron them, and then you, like that hold it down for like five seconds I think maybe I could have held that just a tiny bit longer but that's a that's a beautiful crease so it definitely worked just fine um, so we'll call that a win so uh, whatever that was on the screen a minute ago $17 roughly so yeah get one of those and you can look extra sharp so I'm gonna be wearing that at my conference coming up so that, or where, I won't be wearing it exactly, I guess. Um, I will be using that for my conference coming up so that my clothes look nice and sharp. And I have a amazing green bow tie as well, which uh, I don't have out right now, but uh, I'll be sure to get some nice pictures of that. So, there you go. There's a, a lesson for you today. Look how messy my house is in the background. I can't believe I gotta clean this up one of these days. Uh, I might look at a different location um, uh, for a few shows. I've been. I would like to get back to going um, off-site if possible. Now, that doesn't always work with the uh, vehicle and the like. But uh, um, but I think I'm gonna try to go back and do some off-site shows again because it's kind of fun to go over to the park or whatever. I want to hear a noise outside. What's going on? Hold on. Oh. There we go. Okay, they stopped. Good. That's the. That's uh, what we want to see. Came to almost full stop. Um, 
Okay. Uh, next thing, I had something else. Oh yes, um, real quick. Um, I have two more things. So let me go over here. Okay, I'm gonna share a website here in a moment. <clears throat> okay, here we go. All right, so this is where I'm heading uh, on Wednesday. Um, I think I shared this in a show before. This looks. This seems. Uh, it seems like we've talked about this already, but um, but nonetheless, we'll just have a quick look. It's actually pretty sweet. So yes, as as it's going through the pictures here, um, the French Lick Resort in French Lick in West Baden, Indiana. Um, so it is work, as you can see. Um, <laughs> uh, it is work. It is a conference for work. It's actually very packed from beginning to end. So I want to clarify that there'll be a lot of work getting done. Uh, it's nice surroundings, but we are there to work. Um, so and that uh, that I can say sincerely, it will be we will be quite busy. Um, but uh, anyways, the um, uh, you know pretty nice uh, setup there. So you can see all the nice amenities that they have. Um, and uh, I won't go through all the the history or anything here, but uh, um, but nonetheless, go check that out if you like. It's FrenchLick.com if you want to like see some more details about that. But that's where I'm heading this week. Um, Nate will be here by himself, so you know I guess he'll he might get get lonely. Uh, something tells me that he won't. But uh, but uh, anyways, he'll be here by himself this week. <clears throat> so I have one more thing I want to share with you. And I'll put the um, the information in the show notes uh, after we get done here. Um, I'm going to um, share my screen again. Um, okay, so I have some healthy recipes that I tried out. And uh, this one, chicken fajitas, uh, really took me by surprise because it was uh, excellent. And if you have to eat healthy, uh, it's not easy. Um, not easy to eat healthy, but it uh, can be done. And so look at that. Okay, so the full recipe is on here. I'm going to walk you through how I made it. Um, I'm going to click over to another tab here. Um, for a topping, I also did the easy guacamole um, right here. And so that makes a nice healthy topping that goes on top of the fajitas uh, so that you don't have to put sour cream on them, right? So, um, so anyways, we got that. And uh, with that, I would like to share with you my video for how I made the fajitas, and then um, we will call it a day. So here is my video on how I made fajitas, and two things to note, three things to note. Um, uh, for some reason, uh, it was, I guess, a little darker than I uh, realized when I recorded this, so um, uh, it was, I was cooking them at about 10 o'clock at night. Um, <laughs> and the camera is also slightly at an angle. Uh, you probably would have noticed if I didn't say anything, but since I did, um, then, uh, you know, there's, there's that. <laughs> and, then, um, and then the other thing is, both the recipe and in my video, I discuss um, putting... Um, uh, some, some uh, one ingredient in there that is not actually used, and that would be. Um, hold on one second. What ingredient did I leave out? It was the um, not parsley. Hold on. What? Which I got? I'm looking at my my list here real quick. So it was the cilantro. That's right, the cilantro. Okay. So the video, the recipe calls for cilantro. I mentioned it in the video, and then it never gets used, and the recipe doesn't doesn't mention it either, other than an ingredient. But suffice it to say, I think you can put that on as a topping. Um, it would certainly add to it as long as it's chopped up nicely. Um, but anyways, here's my video on how I made fajitas. We'll put this on, and then we'll call it a day. So here we go. All right, y'all. Uh, you know, due to a uh, poor evaluation by my doctor. Um, I have been trying to eat healthy and I started out and I was eating things like apples and carrots and things like that. Okay, that's fine, but that only goes so far. I decided, you know, what is good? There has to be something that is healthy and good. Well, yes, there is. Um, there's a few different things. Um, one that we will work on tonight is chicken fajitas and we will make those uh, with a topping of guacamole. Um, we will eat those on corn tortillas, which are better than flour. Um, and so to make these, we need, back here I have some chicken breasts that are floating in water because I'm thawing them from the freezer. So 
We have chicken breast. Um, we will be using three large peppers, bell peppers. We are going to um, add to that, um, it calls for one large onion, but we're going to use a medium and a small because we don't have any large onions readily available. Um, then we are going to use olive oil for cooking in. The best kept secret for people who have to eat healthy. You cannot beat olive oil. You can make things with that. It's very good for you and they still have, they're still like frying with regular oil, I guess you might say. So very good there. Um, we are going to use a lime and then we are going to use some nice fresh cilantro. Okay. Then um, we are going to make a fajita um, mix, basically the seasoning, and that seasoning will consist of chili powder, cumin, um, we will have paprika, we'll have salt, we'll have pepper, we will have garlic powder, and we will have onion powder, and we will have cayenne pepper. So we will uh, put all the ratios uh, in the show notes so that you'll be able to cook this at home. We'll do all that. Um, for the guacamole, we will use, we will, um, let me see what the ingredients are here. We will use three ripe avocados. In this bag I have a few more than three, but uh, we will use three ripe avocados. Um, and then we will use a few cloves of garlic right here, and we will use another lime. All right, so that's what we're gonna do. Let's go uh, cook that all up over on the stove. Um, I will walk through that, and then we'll do a taste test, and we'll see. Um, I have a feeling this will be something that is healthy and delicious, and if you learn to cook properly, um, and you research your ingredients just a little bit, you can make some really delicious food that is healthy. I say healthy by my standards. Uh, it's far better than the frozen pizzas I was eating. Uh, I'm no, I'm not a nutritionist. I am not a doctor. So whether this is truly healthy, I don't know, but it's a lot healthier than what I was eating. And I've lost 12 pounds, all right? So there must be something to this, right? So anyways, let's go ahead and go to the stove and see if we can cook up some delicious fajitas. Alrighty, I'm going to go ahead and make up the um, seasoning for the fajitas, then we'll cut the chicken and the, uh, the peppers and everything. Um, I have the skillet heating up on medium heat right now. I want to get it kind of hot. I don't have any oil in it yet, but I'm going to go ahead and warm that up while we're cutting up ingredients and while we are mixing up our seasoning. So, for the seasoning, we want to put in two teaspoons of chili powder right there. So two teaspoons of chili powder. One and two. Okay. Then we next want to put in one teaspoon of cumin right there. So we have our cumin. We want one teaspoon of that. Oh no. All right. So one teaspoon of that right there. Let me pick that cap up. <clears throat> and I have it right there. There we go. Alright, so the next thing I want to do is put in a teaspoon of paprika. So I have paprika right here. Put in a teaspoon of that. Okay. Then I want to put in a half teaspoon of, uh, if I can get it here, a half teaspoon of garlic powder. Okay, I'm going to kind of estimate this. Yeah, it's about a half teaspoon. Okay. And then I want a half teaspoon of onion powder right here. Put that in. Okay. There we go, about like that. I think I put in a little more than a half a teaspoon, but that's okay. Then I want to put in a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper, but I like my stuff spicy, so I'm going to go ahead and go with a half teaspoon. It's adventuresome, for sure, but uh, I like things spicy. So, there we go. Lots of good cayenne pepper. Now, I want 
black pepper and I might have to get creative on this one because I don't have a way to grind this up and measure it. It doesn't quite work that way. So I'm going to go ahead and grind it up and then put that in there and see if I get my measurement just about right. Okay, so you probably follow what I'm doing here. I'm going to take all of that and I need a teaspoon of black pepper. Let's see how close we are with my estimation here. Not bad. Not bad. Get the rest of that picked up there. Okay, there's that. And we'll do a little more just for good measure. Since I was a little short on my estimate, put that in there. Okay, all right. Then we need to do the same thing with our salt. I have sea salt. You know what? Actually, let's see if we can find some regular salt. Dun dun dun, regular salt. All right, so that's what we want um, for this, I would say. I think the sea salt might not quite be right. Okay, so we got that in there. Okay, <clears throat> so those are, those are our ingredients that we need for the seasoning. So I'm gonna mix that all up real good. And I'll have a smell here. See what it, ooh, that really smells good. That definitely has a very distinct fajita smell to it. Okay, so mix that up real good. Okay. And have a little bit of extra black pepper here. I'll just go ahead and toss that in while I'm at it. Okay. That really smells quite wonderful, actually. So let's set that aside. Okay. And then let's go ahead and put in our olive oil in the skillet over here. We want a couple tablespoons of that. And... Uh, we don't have to be too conservative with this. I was showing a different bottle of olive oil at the beginning, but this will be fine. They're both the same thing. This just happens to be the one that I already have open. So we'll put that in here and let that start getting hot. Okay. Then we are going to take our chicken and we're going to cut that into some nice strips and we're going to warm that up essentially well more than warm it up we're going to basically sear it real good and then after that we're going to take it out then we'll put it back in towards the end after we get the uh, the onions and peppers all cooked up nice so there's our delicious chicken well it doesn't really look delicious right now but it will be when we get done with it i have an old knife but it actually is quite sharp and will do a nice job. So we're going to take this and we're going to cut this into strips as best we can. Okay. So I'm going to cut a strip here. Like that. And we'll try to take the fat off here a little bit. We don't uh, want all that, any fat on there if we can avoid it. Okay, strip there. Another one there. Okay. And we'll do it. Go this way. Okay. Got all those. Now this one, we're going to cut it in half. And this is in the neighborhood of a pound and a half. Um, that's what the recipe calls for. So we'll cut that as well, right there. Okay. And you see some specks on there like that. That is some of the black pepper that I had on my uh, mat there from a minute ago. Okay. Okay. Got that all sliced up real nice. Okay, we're going to take that. We're going to sprinkle it real good with the, the seasoning here. Okay, try to be kind of careful about that make sure we get it on all the pieces as much as we can okay okay get that all in there real nice like that okay mmm smells wonderful okay see healthy food doesn't have to be terrible um, I used to think that it did but uh, no you can 
you can do some work on this and get it right and get something that tastes good. Okay, so we'll get that all mixed in there real good. Okay, lots of good seasoning. That'll be some nice hot chicken right there with that all that uh, cayenne pepper in there. Um, <laughs> reminds me of the guy I used to watch on PBS. He was always talking about cooking with cayenne pepper. So I'm so happy that I was able to get my own show <laughs> so that I can do my own cooking. So we're going to throw that in there. We're going to let that go for just about uh, five minutes. We don't want to go overcook this. Uh, we're going to put it back in towards the end again when we do our uh, when we do the rest of our uh, when we after we cook the vegetables. So we don't want to overcook it right now. So about five minutes, and we'll take it out. So I'm going to go ahead and set the timer, and then we'll come right back. Okay, it's been five minutes since I uh, started cooking this, and what we want to do now is take the chicken out of here. And it's not completely cooked yet. That's okay. Okay, we're going to kind of leave all of the spices and everything in there. We are going to set the chicken aside momentarily. And then we are going to cut up all of the other ingredients. Okay, so we're going to set that off of the burner for just a moment while we cut things up. And we're going to cut up three bell peppers into quarter inch slices. Okay, these are nice big ones, so I will go ahead and do that, and we'll be right back with the end result, but I'm going to go ahead and cut those up real nice here, okay? So give me one minute, and we will be right back with peppers cut into quarter inch strips. Okay, we have the peppers ready to go. Now we're going to move on to the onions and slice those up, thinly sliced. As you can see, my oven's still hot. So I'll be careful not to touch that. <laughs> so anyways, let's slice up some onions and then we'll come right back and we'll put it all in there and saute it. Okay, and now here we go. We have the onions sliced up. We have the peppers sliced up. I'm going to put in a little more olive oil just to make sure everything sautés real nice here. I have all the spice left over from cooking the, the chicken. So that's, that's what we want. We're going to let this saute for a about seven to eight minutes. Okay, when the onions, we're going to take those and separate those real nice like that. Okay, how we're doing that? Throwing some more peppers right there. Good thing I'm hungry tonight because this is going to make a lot of food. Okay, get all of that, all those. All right, and that will uh, that'll cook down, of course, here in a minute. Okay. All righty. Now we're gonna let that cook for about seven and a half minutes, and we're going to stir it regularly. So let's do that, and I will be right back. All right, we went ahead and sautéed all this up. We have uh, the onions and the peppers nicely sautéed. We're going to add our chicken back in, and we're going to let that go for about three to four minutes. It's uh, super important that you don't overcook the chicken. I'm going to go ahead and step aside where I can stir this a little bit. You want to cook the chicken just long enough to get it done, but no extra. So this will leave in the neighborhood of 10 minutes total on the chicken. That'd be about uh, six minutes at the beginning and about four minutes at the end here. So you wanna be very cautious about that. Now we're going to cut a lime in half and we're going to put the lime on, uh, we're gonna squeeze the juice from the lime onto all of that. If I can cut it open here for a little extra flavor. Then we're gonna make up a quick batch of guacamole all right, looks like we got that in good shape. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the burner. I want to cover that up with a piece of foil here and set that off to the side a bit. We will serve that right up, but first we need to quickly make some nice guacamole um, because in place of the sour cream that I would normally put on these, I need to have something a little bit healthier and guacamole fits the bill. So let's make up a quick batch of guacamole. I'm going to rinse this off. 
All right, for guacamole, that's actually quite easy. Get a bowl here. All we do is take a bowl, and we need to get a couple of ripe avocados. So let me get those for here. Um, I'm gonna chop those up, or not maybe chop them up exactly, but cut those in half and scoop out all of the avocado and take out the center, okay? So get that. I'm going to cut another one of these, and this is uh, also considered very healthy, which is very surprising to me because I did not know that this kind of food was really healthy, and when I found out, I was like, well, if, it's that, if you can eat this kind of stuff and be healthy, then why not be healthy, Yeah. So, anyways, I'm going to take that, pop that out of there, okay? Then I'm going to take a spoon and scoop that out on each of these. Okay. All right. Next thing we want to do is take some some garlic and slice it up real nice. And then I usually smash it with a fork. I've had a garlic mincer. Matter of fact, I still do. But I find that just chopping it up like this and then mashing it with a fork does a real nice job. And uh, maybe a better job in a way. It's definitely less mess to clean up. Okay. So there's that. Then we're we'll gonna take a fork, mash that a little bit like that, and we'll put that in our guacamole, and then we will mash all of the other, mash that all up here in a moment. Okay. Okay. Now let's put that in our guacamole right there. Smells wonderful. All right. So then we will take another lime, and we will cut that lime in half. And we will squeeze all the lime juice into this. There we go. Did a better job on that lime. Last time I squeezed it in and get it, get a hold of it real good. <clears throat> there we go. Okay. One lime squeezed into there. And now we're going to take our fork. Just start mashing away here. If I can do that without making a giant mess. Alrighty, the guacamole is all mixed up and I have some nice corn tortillas right here. I've dampened those. I'm going to microwave those for about uh, 20 seconds, 25 seconds. Now, um, it is best if you uh, cover those with a paper towel, but sadly I am out of paper towel tonight. But uh, they will turn out fine if you just do them this way too. I think the paper towel is just a little better. It is definitely the preferred way to do this. So. I will clarify that, but um, if all goes according to plan, I'll have uh, some delicious fajitas made up here in just a moment, and I'm very excited to try these out. Let me make sure these are ready to go. Yes, indeed, I think they are. How exciting. Okay, this is very, very good food, and the fact that this is healthy is all that much more uh, staggering, really, because you wouldn't think that food like this would be healthy, right? At least I wouldn't, because when I was thinking healthy food, I was thinking of really some kind of just awful stuff, honestly. So I was thinking of, uh, you know, just uh, eating peas and carrots for dinner and things like that. And uh, that was not, uh, that was, was not really registering with me. Um, but this, you know, now that is, now that's a whole different ball game right there. Look at that, how delicious that looks. Okay, do onion on there. Those look really good, and I've got them partially off the screen, so I apologize. That's what they look like. So, got those. I'm going to cover that back up to keep it warm. I'm going to put my guacamole on those just to, in place of what used to be sour cream that I would put on these. And those should be fairly hot because I did put the extra cayenne pepper in there. Um, but look how delicious those look. You can fold those up like that and be ready to just dig in right so we will do that i'm going to switch over to the other camera and give them a little little taste here but they look very very delicious all right bear with me i'm probably going to make a mess but i went ahead and got one of these ready to go give it a little try mm. that's quite remarkable 
I never would think that was healthy. Mm, mm, mm. Hey, that's good. That is delicious. It really is. It's absolutely delicious. I don't know how you could ask for more. The fact that that's healthy blows my mind. But. And something just fell over there on the other side of the house. Um, but anyways, um, I've been eating food like this for the last several weeks. I've lost 12 pounds. I eat stuff like these fajitas every day. Um, I think that the, the truth is that it comes right down to it. Cook with olive oil, eat a lot of chicken, eat lots of, of, of raw vegetables, even if you cook them in a stir fry. Make sure you use olive oil when you do it and use a lot of spices. That's a big secret. A lot of spices. Make things really spicy and flavorful and delicious. And you will not even know that you're eating fruits and vegetables. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Sorry. It's absolutely delicious. What more could you ask for? Awesome. Anyways, make that. Make it at home. You'll love it. All righty. I highly recommend that one. That, those are so good. All right. I had, I had them for two days in a row. I cooked them so much. There was so much food. Lasted for two days. Um, eat them with corn tortillas. They're totally healthy. Um, if you like, you can even mix up some delicious salsa and bake some uh, tortilla chips and have salsa and chips with it. Um, the crazy thing is that's all healthy and I've been losing weight eating like that. All right. So that's very good. And as long as it's olive oil, even the oil isn't bad. So, so eat up. That is very, very good. So make that for dinner. Um, for dinner tonight, I'm thinking I might make jambalaya, New Orleans style. Um, now this is not something that would be worthy of making a video because you basically put water in it, boil it, put in your meat, done. Anyways, you can make this with chicken and it is uh, not going into focus right now, but uh, <laughs> it focused so nicely the first time. There we go. Um, so anyways, uh, delicious stuff. Um, I'd like to take that and then I put in a fair amount of extra cayenne pepper because I like it hot, but uh, that also makes a huge portion, very, very economical dinner. Um, also uh, fairly healthy. Um, this is just basically rice with spices. Um, the only downside maybe that it's a bit salty, but uh, um, that's okay. So anyways, uh, a bit of a longer show than usual today, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up. Uh, like I said, I might uh, um, do some jamming on the porch later, but it'll be very informal. I probably won't even schedule a video. I'll probably just click live and then if anybody catches it, good. And uh, otherwise, I'll just leave it up posted uh, for viewing later whenever uh, people want. It does seem I get more views later than live. Um, that's fine. Uh, you know, maybe on Sunday afternoon, maybe I'll get more live. Who knows? But, uh, um, but anyways, uh, I think that's about it for me. It is time to go get Nate up for mass, but I think he's already awake, so I'm going to just double check that, but he is off to mass this morning. So anyways, I will talk to you all later. Have a good week, and, um, and I will catch up with some news about my trip when I'm back next week. So talk to you later. Bye-bye.